Welcome into TYT's The Conversation. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence, and today I am joined by Teresa McCalman, Democratic candidate for New York's 46th district for state Senate. Thanks for joining us, Teresa. Thank you for having me back. Thank you. Yes, so the last time you were here, you had run for the 49th district and you were going against a Republican incumbent. Ultimately, you won the Democratic primary, but lost the general election. Now, essentially, that area has been redrawn. So we're looking at the 46th district where Biden won 20 points. So now, tell me about your run. It is extremely exciting. Um, Previously, like you said, in the 49th Senate district, it was a predominantly red district. So lots of Republicans, it was an uphill battle. I fought hard, I won my primary, but unfortunately because of the district at that time, I did not win my general. I did win parts of the district, however, over the incumbent, which are now in this new district. So I'm like, yes, um, my now campaign manager had called me and said, have you seen the new lines? And I'm like, what new lines? Like I'm getting ready to go teach, you know? And I'm like, what, what new lines? He goes, I'm sending it to you. And I looked and I said, are you kidding me? Stop, stop. And he said, yes, yes. And I said, well, we have to do this. Like this is perfect. It's like it was drawn for me, yes. And here we are today is a predominantly democratic district. And um, I do have a primary of course, cuz who would not run for this? But like I did before, I won 73% in my last primary and I plan on doing the same thing now. All right then, and uh, in terms of your incumbent, uh, are you facing the same Republican contender or are we talking a whole different ballpark? A whole different um, Republican, but uh, this she's gonna be new to this district as well. She's a Republican, is a predominantly Democratic. So I'm pretty much going for an open seat. We can look at it that way. It doesn't mean it's gonna be super easy, but it will be somewhat. Of a, yeah. a smooth ride. <laughs> I would imagine, given that, you know, the area Biden won by 20 points. So hopefully you can continue to ride that wave. And so for those potential constituents out there who are looking to you, I guess what what do you have to offer them? Well, I think for the most part, a lot of people in this district know me, but um I was trying to figure out because you know the question is, who are you and why are you running, right? Um, and I was thinking of how to say that in the way that I haven't said it before. And I said, you know what, what really kind of centers me is listening to uh, James Baldwin. And I was uh, watching one of his documentaries just before the show, just to get some inspiration. And he had said something, he said, you know, sometimes I wake up every day. Uh, I wake up and, and on some days and I wake up and I say, what is your role in this world? Who are you? And what is your fight? And then I thought of what brought me here, going from being homeless um, to running for office and everything in between, you know, updating my education, getting four different degrees in like four years because I had a plan. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm running for people like me. When I was homeless, it was unnecessarily difficult to get help and get support, especially as a woman of color. Very difficult, and a woman of color surprisingly married with children. Believe you, <laughs> believe you, me. It is a, a bad stereotype that women like me who have children um, and are going for social services and going for support come in with their husband and say we need help, and we don't often get the help. And my question was, why is it so hard? Why is it so difficult? Who is in charge? Who makes the laws? And that kind of push me on the path to say, things have to change. Because if it's so hard for me, um, a person who can, I can articulate myself and I can fight for myself. But what about those who can't? Those who are used to being oppressed, being silenced, being told no and having to deal with that. Um, what about those people? And why should it be so hard for someone like me trying to get back up on my feet? And I said, it shouldn't happen and no more. I've got to do something about it. So here I am making okay. sure I make do on that promise. Those who came before me and had the same issues, guess what? I've been there, I know, I hear you, you will be my future constituents. I won't have to figure out where you're coming from, I already know, and I'm gonna know how to help you. 
All right, well, it definitely sounds like you are battle tested and you are ready to go into this in terms of making meaningful, impactful change for the people in your community. And so in terms of your platform and what you're looking to share with them, uh, other than that wonderful, at least a bare minimum $15 an hour wage, which is something that as much as we say bare minimum, it could change lives. What else are you running on in terms of your platform? So um, we're just we're just barely getting out of this pandemic, right? And we're still dealing with the after effects of it. So of course, healthcare is very essential. So we have on the tables, um, on the table in the legislature, um, the New York Health Act. We need one more senator to pass that, one more. But we need many more to make sure that it gets passed. I will be that next senator to come in there and make sure that everyone gets the medical coverage that they're supposed to get by passing the New York Health Act. When we do that, we won't have to worry about bills. We won't have to worry about um, overly expensive um, pharmaceutical drugs. And we won't have to worry about big business being in our medical health care and coverage and our decision making. Pass the New York Health Act and we're gonna be a better New York for it. Besides that, also fighting, I know this is probably not gonna speak to a lot of our viewers, but I'm in a rural district and we have farmers. Now farmers are essential for putting food on our table, right? And they also fit in with our small businesses as well. We have to make sure that we're taking care of that. Those are the foundation of our, our economy here, especially up here in upstate New York. So those are the things that we will definitely be fighting for. And of course, many more. That is excellent, it really sounds like you are listening to your constituents and what serves them and the things that they need. And yes, we definitely do need farmers, that's for sure. And in terms of um, in terms of working with the current administration and getting your voices out there and uplifting and making change, do you anticipate that it's gonna be a struggle? Um, no, I mean, being a, a, a freshman senator, it's it's also it's it's obviously going to be hard to to get my voice out there. But I think that because of my experience with working in the Senate, um, when I was making all these changes in my life, I did intern in the Senate, and I worked with one of the senior senators there, a uh, Senator Neil Neil Breslin of Albany. And I got to learn a lot about how things work, how central staff work and other senators and, and writing bills and learning how to um, enact laws and things like that. So I already have um, an understanding of how those things are done. And I already have waiting for me a coalition of people, um, senators, staff, um, former friends and colleagues just waiting to hit the ground running. I just need to make sure that I win in November. <laughs> and that sounds like it's definitely something that you are eyeing. And in terms of those next steps to really push you over the line, I guess, what would you want people to know? I will not stop fighting. I know what it's like. I've been there to be, to be ignored, to be looked over. Um, we have a beautiful district. And it's been highlighted by these new lines. I have a connection to each part of those new districts, either living there, advocating in the community, or going to school in those communities. I hear you, I've heard you. I made a promise that I will fight to make sure that your voices are heard in Albany. And I am not going to fight until we get there. And I can only get there with your help. And if they want to help you and to get involved, uh, where would you suggest people start? Well, they can go to my website, find out more about me and my backstory. It's a long story and I can't say it all right here in these few minutes that we have. Um, you can go to TeresaForSenate.com, that's T-H-E-A-R-S-E. For Senate, the word F O R, Senate.com. You can find out more about me. You can also go there to donate as well. I'm also on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. I am, I think we have a YouTube channel, I'm on Twitter. And my daughter is telling me I need a TikTok. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I'll leave that to her, but we'll probably get one of those too. 
Yes, I'm sure you will at some point in time. There are a lot of people out there on TikTok. And in terms of the people out there who are wondering, you know, making the decision between you and the other individuals who are running, what would you say distinguishes you? Well, besides the fact that I have a connection to every single part of this district, I've worked in it, I've lived in it. Um, I would actually represent history. Um, if they want to be a part of a history making movement and a, a historic uh, seat, they definitely should get behind this campaign. I'll be the first woman of color. The first woman of Native American descent, just in case you didn't know, I am Native American. I actually speak my mother's native language. And also the first woman to ever represent this district. So if they want to be a part of that, make history, make changes, and move our district forward, I'm your gal. Wow, it definitely sounds like you do bring a lot to the table in terms of experience as well as background representation and essentially a wealth of knowledge and experience, Teresa. That is so incredibly cool. And I think that the people there in the 46th district, that they can appreciate that. So let's hope, we will see. And when is the election for you? So the primary is June 28th. We're gonna start petitioning next month. So if anyone wants to join the team, you can go to the website or you can email me at TeresaForSenate at gmail.com. Or you can call me 518-387-9871, that's the campaign number. And we'll be happy to have you on the team. Wow, it really sounds like you guys got everything lined up. And I'm sure that the people of the 46th district are very grateful to have you as well as the other contenders out there. And may you continue to shine and do well. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, can you drop your website so people know where they can get more information? TheresaForSenate.com, T-H-E-A-R-S-E-F-O-R, Senate.com. Hope to hear from you all. Thank you so much for joining us. That is Teresa McCallman, Democratic candidate for New York's 46th District State Senate. Thanks for joining us, Teresa. Thank you.